Where's it? Where's it? It's nowhere to be found. Where's it? I'll have to look around the shed where all my games are stored. Ports and cards galore. I'll be shifting through my hoard. Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Behind the Yu-Gi-Oh! Where's it? Maybe in this... Oh! What's this? Maple Story. That used to be a thing. And Metabots and Shaman King. Oh, what memories all this brings! But where's it? What's this? There's dumb former versions of classic strategy games and blurry screenshot art in lazy Photoshop frames. These tiny little figures, oh, they kind of hurt my eyes. Dungeon and Dragon ripoffs of every shape and size. The coins, the dice, this annoying peripheral device. I keep asking myself how and why. The empty shelves inside just keep on filling up. I think I just about had enough, but I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to review. I've got to know, I've got to know where in this place can it be found. Where is it? Oh, there it is. The Nightmare Before Christmas may mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but I've always felt it was a transitional holiday film. I very much identify with Jack's post-Halloween depression and the epiphany that Christmas is still just around the corner. It's the perfect film for three whole months of the year. Four if you're dating a goth chick. Happy Halloween! Merry Christmas! In fact, I think it was originally released in theaters during Thanksgiving, under Touchstone. Yeah, at the time, Disney kinda wanted to keep its distance from this. And this. Oh, but they love Tim Burton now. They love Nightmare Before Christmas. I see little money-making shrines every time I walk by a Hot Topic or go into a Walgreens now. Yeah, working here used to be a real sweet gig. Back when it was mostly rock band t-shirts. Then Nightmare Before Christmas happened. That's when everything went to shit. Now it's all Doctor Who this and My Little Pony that and Hello Kitty and Pokemon. <laughs> Oh, and I don't know what a yokai is, but I know I f it. And of course, there was eventually a card game that came from it. Weird that it's sealed up like a package of cigarettes. What, does it come with a little Surgeon General's warning on the side? Warning! Prolonged exposure to Tim Burton may result in blurry vision, black dye stains, bad Jonan Vasquez fan art, and a sensation of... <laughs> This game's kinda hard to find now, really. A single booster pack costs about as much as a starter deck, shipping included. And out of the four decks, I happened to come across the mares. By the way, was anyone else expecting the mayor to be a bad guy during their first viewing? You know, because of the whole two-faced politician thing? Like the third act twist was going to be that he was working for Oogie Boogie all along? But actually, it turned out he was just kind of neurotic, but still well-meaning, and someone who really loves his community. Definitely one of my favorite characters. God rest Glenn Shattuck's soul. And how appropriate that I would get the mayor deck, since building the best Halloween town possible is exactly the goal of this game. You and other players have 12 days to get ready for Christmas by playing locations, characters, creations, and surprises. <laughs> This game can be played by any number of players, although if you have five, someone will get screwed out of their turn as Pumpkin King, since 12 isn't divisible by it. Oh yeah, players take turns being the Pumpkin King. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I should start with the location cards. A very important kind of card. They even have their own little deck off to the side. Aw, oh, isn't that sweet? Locations are the building blocks of your Halloween town, and you play a new one at the start of each round. And just like building a town in real life, you can't just decide you want this building to go in between these two buildings over here. You've got to build out in a straight line, on this side or this side. Maybe you could do that in the Harry Potter card game, but not here. Now every deck comes with, and you can only have, one starter location. You can tell because it has a zero and an asterisk. The mayor comes with the mayor mobile, which is actually an object and not a location. So does the mayor live out of his car? Oh, that's kind of sad. you think the mayor deck would start with Town Hall. Although it is clear that Jack is the head of a puppet government. Starting locations are important because they tell you how big your starting hand is and give you three default functions to choose from. See these? These are functions. See this zero? That means you can use any of these functions from the start. You can only choose one during your turn. Now this new location I added also has a function but it has a number in the corner. So I have to pay in these pumpkin points? 
you pay in characters. This is a threshold number. You can use this particular function only if you have characters at this location with a combined scared number equal or greater to the threshold number. So how do you play characters? By paying for them with pumpkin points. Great! How many do I start with? Zero. Well, how do I get some? By picking a function you can play. But that's not the function I want. Well, too bad. Fine, I'll use this function, and just save up all my points to play a character I want. You don't get to keep the points at the end of each round. They go back to zero. Now oh, come on! Pumpkin points are here in an instant and gone in a flash. So if you have them, you better spend them. And you better think hard about whether you want to waste a turn getting them. That's why so many other locations offer you a combination of points, drawing cards, and movements. Oh, move, or movements, lets you move one character to one location. Now the wording here is a bit muddled. Uh, the way they have it written makes it sound like you move five cards anywhere you want them. But actually you get to move one character five times between connected locations. Or five characters one time, or any combination they are in between. So that way you can move key characters around. But you definitely want to populate your town with as many characters as fast as possible. Luckily, most of the characters that come in this deck only cost one pumpkin point to play. Yes, the scare number is also the cost. And most cards are actually cheaper if you play them at certain locations. And some characters have bonuses if you play them with others. Like James the Sax Player. If you play him at a location with any other card with player in its name, you get to draw one card. Great, because I got a bass player, and an accordion player, and another James. Whoa, settle down, buddy. You can only have one of each character in Halloween Town at a time. Now, lots of card games incorporate the concept of unique. It means you can only have one of a character, either in play or maybe even in your whole set. It's usually reserved for very strong characters, and sometimes tied to a narrative significance. The one example that immediately pops in my head are a lot of cards from Call of Cthulhu. Especially Cthulhu. Because, you know, he's Cthulhu. And since each player is building their own version of Halloween Town, where and who specific characters are with is kind of important. And it would be game-breaking if you could have more than one Jack or Mare on the board in two different places. But what am I supposed to do with all these duplicates? Well, what can I say? It's a starter deck. Of course there's going to be a ton of duplicates. However, this game does have mechanics that alleviate the excess cards you may experience. In other words, extra cards are expendable, and you can use them to do other things. So I should just save them. Oh no, you can only have seven cards in your hand at the end of each round. You have to discard the extra. Ah, oh, come on! Well, you might like, or hate, surprise cards then. Surprises are cheap effect cards that will often give you two actions to choose from. Like, hitch a ride. You can move any number of characters to the Mayor Mobile's location. Or, away from the Mayor Mobile's location. Or is an ironclad keyword. You can't do both. Now that I think about it, they really should add an either in front of the first option. Another convention of surprises is searching. This gobbledygook is shorthand for you set the top three cards in your deck face up on the table for everyone to see. If there are any mare, lock, shock, or barrel cards, you add them to your hand. Even if you're only looking for the mare and you only find the others, you gotta take them. Surprises can also give bonuses to your characters, like doubling their score for a turn, or even messing with other players. Like, public transportation gives each player a turn to move another player's character to another location. But any characters at the same location as the mayor are immune to this effect. Now, there is something called surprise reimbursement. <coughs> Basically, you set aside any surprises you play that turn, and then you get to draw that number of cards. Why? Wasn't I trying to get rid of cards? I don't know. It's kind of dumb. And finally, there are creations. Just like in the movie, everyone is busy making stuff in preparation for the big day. Creations are the best way to rack up huge points. But like characters, you have to pay for them in pumpkin points. But that can sometimes be hard or even impossible to do. Luckily, meeting certain requirements can cut their costs dramatically. Like Jingle Bells costs one less for every player character you have on the board. After 12 rounds, you add up all the numbers of your characters, creations, and even some of the permanent surprise effects. 
You exclude the locations because you didn't pay anything for those. The player with the highest number wins. If it's a tie, the winner is the one with the most active locations on the field. Well, I think that just about covers everything. I am the Pumpkin King! Oh yeah, that. I mentioned the mechanic earlier, but it's kind of hard to explain the significance of it without knowing what everything else is first. At the end of each start phase, if that makes any sense, each player takes turns being the Pumpkin King, which means they get to choose the day's activity. All players may discard one card to draw a card, start the round with one pumpkin point, or move one card. But as you can see, there are some exceptions. The player with the least cards gets a free draw, the player with the most creations gets one free point, and the player with the most characters gets one free move. The idea is to choose an activity that will benefit you and screw over the other players, but I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna give this game credit. This captures the feeling of the movie nicely, incorporating all the characters, settings, and themes. And I can even forgive it for the grainy stock screenshots and less than inspired layout. However, I do find this game kind of obtuse. It's easy to run into the problem of having too few or too many cards. And the drawing, discarding, and Pumpkin King mechanics combat the symptoms, but not the core problem. I'd say add different characters and different creations to give you more options, but if you do that, you reduce your chance of drawing cards that you need to play effective and necessary combos. Yeah, why don't you just use the search function? Now, I could do that, but I could just be throwing away tons of good cards that might have actually been useful. Although that doesn't really matter, because if you run out of cards, you just reshuffle your deck. To put it simply, this card game is like a Rube Goldberg machine. It works, and it's really cool to look at, but at the same time, it's a lot of moving parts for a mundane task. For example, there's a mechanic called Hex. None of my characters have it, but it means that character has an effect that triggers with a certain action. Moving, playing a card, etc. After that, you place a Hex on them, and then at the end of the round, you remove it. That's not necessary! All you need to say are the magic words, once during your turn. Hex sounds way more badass than it really is. Like making your card game look like cigarettes. All in all, a really interesting game that does a great job of capturing the film. Even if the gameplay reminds me more of the afterlife in Beetlejuice. Oh no, thank you. I'm trying to cut down myself. <laughs>